What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Justin Odisha podcast. Today on the show with me, I have Sarah Dunk. She has her own YouTube channel uh, and runs a couple different Instagram pages. I do. Kind of revolving around like thrifting adventures and yep. like almost like fashion and secondhand and vintage and stuff like that, right? Yeah. How so would I'm you introduce yourself? I guess you pretty much summed it up. Like, I started not doing what I'm doing now at all. It was completely different. So my personal page is still kind of a little bit of that. Um, but Thrifted This, my second account that I run, is all based on like thrifting content. So it's like nice to have that outlet that's very niche because still my personal brand is, I'm sure you know too, sometimes you just want to post stuff that isn't about yeah. filming and photography and stuff like yeah. that. So when it's your job, it's kind of hard to navigate where you want to post certain types of content but yeah that's mostly me people know me mostly for thrifting so yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. a good way to de to describe it yeah so she has a page called thrifted this which you mentioned mm -hmm. so you have your personal page where you post vlog type of videos on youtube it yeah. still revolves around the same stuff but you also have a totally separate like a brand or account that you're building around mm -hmm. thrifting can you explain what that is yeah so about a year ago I'd say I realized on YouTube because I don't know I didn't really have a direction with my channel it was mostly just like I like to say girly type of things like when I started my channel I just wanted to be like a girl that talked about makeup some days and then some days I talked about shopping and just giving different types of advice on interests that I had and my, my friends had and then I started to realize that if I wanted to grow my channel, I had to focus on something a little bit more specific, just like you do, obviously. And I think with all the competition and everything like that in 2019, it really does help if you have like a, a focus. So yeah, about a year ago, thrifting videos were doing way better than anything else that I was putting on my channel. So I was like, okay, maybe I should, I enjoyed it too, but I was like, I should definitely stick with it. Daniel was the one actually that was like, you need to be uploading a huge thrift haul every week and I was yeah. like I don't think I can do that but I still don't really do that and I s probably should but I try and include some sort of thrifting content at least like once a week and yeah so on my channel now it's it is a lot of thrifting but I'm actually at a point where I kind of want it to be a little bit less again I guess I just want to upload more in general so that people know more about my life too and then just thrifting is like a complimentary thing there but yeah yeah well you mentioned for i met you because i've collaborated with your boyfriend daniel here which he's not really in the frame oh, but i thought he was there um, he's here he's editing a video we just did but i actually had him on the podcast and i thought it'd be a good idea to have you on the podcast too but i think it would be really interesting to explain mm -hmm. like you just mentioned he was like giving you tips and mm -hmm. you guys strategize together i find that dynamic really interesting like mm -hmm. Did you guys know each... How long have you guys known each other? And Because YouTube is a relatively yeah. recent development. So I, when did you guys meet? Before all this stuff? Yeah, before. you both do YouTube. We both do. Um, <clears throat> so we met... We've been dating for six years now. So I guess we met just over six years ago. And at the time, I actually had another channel that I started with a friend just for fun. And it was like first year university. And I was always someone in high school that watched YouTube religiously and like followed so many accounts. And as I mentioned, it was kind of like those accounts that I was trying to emulate, like the typical, oh, here's like what's in my bag and like make yeah. a tutorial, a little bit of everything. So I had a friend that not many of my friends were interested in YouTube. And I guess like with our age range, I think a l it missed a lot of people too like it was a specific interest yeah. like you had to be like a, a computer yeah nerd. Like, like some you people, had to grow up on the internet yeah some people were more into tv but i was just more into youtube so anyways yeah my friend and i decided to do it together because we were both too nervous to start our own channel um and that didn't work out too well she went to a school that was like an hour away from toronto maybe a little more than an hour and she wasn't coming into the city all the time and it was just it just wasn't it wasn't working out so I kind of gave up after that like I tried to run the channel a little bit on my own and yeah, I don't even really know what happened with that we just like put it to rest and then I started dating Daniel and I was nervous again to start something on my own 
but eventually he kind of talked me back into it. I had a lot of friends that I was working with at the time. I was working retail and I was always getting questions too when I was at work from customers and stuff like, oh, what makeup are you wearing or what just stuff that I felt I could talk about to a bigger audience because I was passionate about it. So yeah, I just started. I remember putting up that first video I made Daniel like sit with me while I was filming it because I thought that would be better, but that was a bad idea. I was very uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't think that video, just like everyone's first video, yeah. I don't think that's public anymore. But yeah, so he helped me out with that. And of course, his like camera knowledge was very, very helpful. And even though it's developed a lot since then too, like that first video was really bad compared to anything that we would put out today. But yeah, it was definitely nice having his encouragement because he had put YouTube videos up before, not yeah. in the filming niche, but you know, for skateboarding and stuff like that. So he had built... An audience. <laughs> there's Ollie. Um, <laughs> to Hello, make sure Ollie. he doesn't get on the courts. Oh, uh, he can't see it, but there's a dog here. A very cute one. Hey, Ollie. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Daniel mentioned when, when I interviewed him. Mm-hmm. I was going to say he had also been into YouTube for a long time. And yeah. Doing something he was passionate and interested about. Like exactly. Skateboard vids. And so you also had been into YouTube. And then you, once you met, he was still actively doing it. And he, he kind of like... I don't encouraged you again. He was kind of just fizzling out. I think of his skateboarding phase. YouTube phase. Yeah. yeah. He would upload a video here and there, but it wasn't anything that he like took too seriously. I don't think at the time it was always just for fun, but um, yeah. And then he like completely stopped, but I started like uploading consistently. I was uploading at least once a week, like for the longest time ever. Like I'd say like, two or three years to at least two years I like never missed a week like I was so on top of being consistent because that's what everyone always said like you have to be consistent it's the number one key and yeah I took that really seriously so he started up again I guess like when I you know started to gain more traction and stuff like that and got really excited about it and that made him want to get into it too but I think it was when he finished school that he had the time for me I I didn't go away for school so I was here and I had a lot of like flexible hours that I could work with and not as many I wasn't surrounded by as many people as you are when you typically go to like an away from the city type of school yeah so yeah I think after we kind of inspired each other to keep going and it's definitely helpful because it's such a random industry I guess you could call it that yeah connecting with people is always really nice and getting advice and stuff like that so you know, being with someone all the time is definitely, definitely helpful. Like even just how do I respond to this email or is this legit or cause sometimes we'll, we'll get reached out to by similar brands too, which is really cool. And yeah. sometimes things look like spam and you're like, is this real? Did you get this email too? Or is it just like someone trying to mess with me? So yeah, it's definitely been fun working on it together. Yeah. I was going to say like that, that's a huge question people have face like when you do something really kind of unique and and modern of a job mm-hmm. as online content digital business type of stuff mm-hmm. like you said it's random so where when you when i worked retail too mm-hmm. you're you have um i don't even remember what they call them anymore because I, I, I don't have them anymore <laughs> it's been a while. you have co-workers yeah, yes that's the word <laughs> yeah see others but, yeah, but when you're working on your own, you don't really no. have coworkers anymore. So you just kind of have your coworkers become like how I am to you and Daniel. Like yeah. Colleagues that, you know, even across the world mm-hmm. that do similar stuff as you. It's not no more that you all work at the same store or the same mall. Yeah. So it can be nice to have someone that you also knew on a personal level, and, mm-hmm. but you guys are now both doing the same things because I'm sure it'd be weird if, they're not weird, but it would be difficult if you were working retail and Daniel was like doing this YouTube stuff and you just couldn't relate on, on yeah. anything. I de- yeah, it would definitely be harder. different. I've spoken to some other girls who do what I do too. And, you know, with what we do, it's a lot of like getting clothing and makeup and stuff yeah. for free too. And they just say like their boyfriend doesn't understand or like they'll be out and sh- she will say take a picture of me like I need this and it's like what are you why am I taking this picture of you you know it's like such a different concept so yeah it definitely is nice and we've reached out to like Daniel's very good at connecting with other creators too in his space and even in other genres and I try and do that a lot too because as you said it 
it's definitely good to have those connections and the coworker aspect because yeah. that's like totally totally lost with what we do and it gets kind of lonely sometimes yeah. like it's a little weird but <laughs> no i agree i, I like the one thing i like about you guys is because like a lot of times when if you do find a couple that both does youtube or instagram whatever mm -hmm. it's that they have like a family channel or they have a couple yeah. channel but what i really think is cool about your guys relationship is you're both in totally separate mm -hmm. niches you're not just like a each other's secondary channel yeah you do you have like your own audiences your mm -hmm. audiences probably don't even know each other too much no yeah i don't think so i've had a couple of daniels like i know when it's a daniel follower that follows <laughs> me like yeah we i just that. i just go to the profile and i'm like okay this is <laughs> photography this is video this is someone that daniel brought over but it's only if i'm ever like when he put up that beats airpod one yeah, and i was you, tagged in feature. it then i got a couple of followers but yeah it's it's not really similar i guess if we were to collaborate because something i do want to get more into is is vlogging of course like just yeah. typical vlogs but i just i don't even know if i want to like start another channel to do that on because i'm very we both kind of are i wouldn't say stubborn but we're very specific about we what we upload so to me i don't really want to turn my channel into a vlog channel because that just kind of seems yeah. like a dead end almost and to keep people interested in what you're doing every day I think you need to get to like a certain point first so I don't know I might do something on a second channel or whatnot and because I do want to include more of us together yeah. but not in like a family channel type of way either more yeah. just showing our interests and a little bit more about what we do and stuff yeah. like that I think even though because I actually watch like a lot of thrifting channels mm-hmm who are your favorites? Well, I watch probably like the guy through. Yeah. So, I, I only I, watch I a couple of the guys. It, it's hard to um, find. There's this guy, my buddy kind of, I don't know him personally, but I hope to meet him. But mm -hmm. we've been friends online. Uh, this guy, College Picker. I don't know if you watch his channel. I don't think I've heard of him. He's much more into like the resale side of things yeah. and the flipping side of things. Um, then, of course, you have like the funny dudes like Paul Cantu. And yeah. Stuff. Which I uh, so let's talk about thrifting. Let's yeah, get let's talk. Let's get into thrifting. that. <laughs> Happy Canada Day, by the way. Oh yes, I came thank on you. A good day. Happy early. What is that? W what is Canada yeah. Day? Let's not talk about history. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's not my strong suit. Well, I was gonna ask, what are the thrifts like in Canada? Because I'm coming from the states, and we have Salvation. Mm -hmm. so I like Salvation. Salvation yeah, is my favorite. Me too. I don't really go to Goodwill. We have Saint Vincent de Paul. I've never been to one of those, but what do you? What's like your routine so in toronto there's actually not that that many like in the city area like if you were to go out i'm trying to think like in the gta the greater yeah. toronto area so like the suburbs there's definitely more so we have valley village which is like savers and i know there are some valley villages in the states as well i just thought they're owned by savers so yeah. sometimes they're called valley village sometimes they're See, called I, savers i don't even have savers states. by me no, no. wow I, there's one in Buffalo that I've been to, but yeah, it's like pretty much walking into the exact same store. Um, and then we have Salvation Army and we have a store called Tilly's, which I believe that's Canadian. Daniel took me to Tilly's, I think, last time Did I was he? here. Is no. it girls stuff though? No, no, no. He, uh, he has his headphones in. No, yeah. He took me to some He took you store. to Black Market, I think. Okay, that's mind. more vin like, there's a lot of cool vintage stores here too, but to me, I don't consider that like thrifting so much because it's, it's just like, you know, yeah. picked products, but yeah, we don't really have Goodwill. Goodwill shut down in Toronto, I want to say probably like six years ago, but they still exist on the outskirts a little bit, like near Niagara and Guelph and where all those colleges and universities are, um, which is too bad because I always like going to Goodwill when I'm in the States. But yeah, I've actually found myself going to Buffalo quite a bit lately because that's only like a two hour drive from here on a good day and the prices are just so much better in the states in general i don't know how it is yeah, where you are because i've heard different i talk a lot about that on my channel too like price and value and stuff like that because i find it interesting how you know these stores how they price things and if it's based off of like we're talking strictly thrift stores like where you know it's for charity there's a mm -hmm. huge charitable aspect and they're getting things for free like how are they pricing how are they determining the price like based on location and stuff like that so here i find the prices are really getting insanely marked up which is makes me really sad because in a way it's great that more people are going thrifting and they're 
hitting up the stores here and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's like makes it hard to do what you want to do. And even it just to me, it doesn't make sense. Like I've talked to my friends about this and Daniel about this. It's like you think of thrift stores and you think, you know, like the most affordable option realistically for clothing because it's used and it's being donated. And then when you go in there and you're seeing jackets for $50, like winter jackets, right? Think about a family that just moved to Toronto and they need winter jackets, right? You could go to the mall and get a jacket for cheaper than that. And I think that kind of almost defeats the purpose of it because it's like, you know, this is supposed to be the go-to, the number one, and it's not like, why are they marking it up to $50? I totally understand, you know, like they've got to pay people (laughs) and it is becoming more popular, but you see a lot of like, based on the brand, it's going up and it's not so much like this is a t-shirt, it's $2, that's what it's going to be type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think you brought up a really interesting point actually with that because like you said, you actually distinguish between the thrifts and then the stuff that already p- curates mm-hmm. it to a nicer vintage selection. Yeah. Like I know in the States, one that's really popular is round two. Yeah. And this, this is actually a point I wanted to bring up. Mm-hmm. I think the reason I enjoy thrifting is it's actually, a, it's actually almost like the same skill as editing. It's like you're going into a place with a bunch of raw material and mm-hmm. the whole joy of it for me is like, being able to pick out the diamond in the rough Mm -hmm. or pick out the good stuff. It's the same skill as like cutting down all your raw footage to the best clips. That's true. It's a good way. And even like when you thrift, you put together the outfit. That's like your final video. Anyway, that's why I like it so much too. You never know. (laughs) But yeah, to all the editors out there, they're like, why do I care about thrifting? thrifting? But it's like the skill of editing can be translated. Yeah. But then you have it getting so popular where, you know, Salvation Army is supposed to be affordable secondhand clothing. Mm Mm-hmm. But the problem is now they feel like they're missing out because you're going to go in there and buy some Nike shoes and and resell them. Do you have any experience? Like there's different angles in thrifting. Do you Mm -hmm. thrift from the just for your personal closet collection and stuff that you like? Or do you have you made sort of a business out of reselling? Is that some part of your business or? Um, Yeah. So mostly I do it for myself. I'm. I don't really have like an online presence for reselling or anything like that at the moment. I've tried out Depop. I just, I think we spoke about this last time when we met. Shipping is so expensive from Canada that it just makes it so, It again, it kind of defeats the purpose because I never really want to rip someone off and say like, here's this item that I got for $7. Like I'm going to sell it to you for 40 now, depending on the item. Like if it's some exclusive yeah. actual vintage piece, then that's fine everything good yeah (laughs) but um yeah so it was making it really hard for me to just because even shipping into to toronto like toronto address to another toronto address it's minimum ten dollars which is a lot yeah and then you have like if i ship to vancouver most of the time for just like one item too it's like 15 16 dollars which is again a lot for you know you're just buying one thing from one person it's second hand so I kind of haven't done anything with Depop in a while just because I wasn't happy with that. And it, it is really time consuming too. Although I'm thrifting like for my videos and stuff, again, I'm very particular. So like with pictures and like building a brand and stuff like that, I just wasn't happy with what I was putting up on Depop. And yeah, so what I do actually, because there's pr- a pretty big thrifting community of girls. I have yet to find any guys on YouTube here in Toronto that are doing it. But yeah, there's a bunch of us thrifting girl YouTubers, I guess you could say, in the city. So what we do or what we started doing or what I started doing, I guess, like a year ago, um, I had an opportunity to use a space um, and on a pretty busy street here in Toronto. I'm trying to think actually how it started now because I'm like, what? Yeah, this, trying is, to the, back <laughs> this is the thrifted this, like you Market, do pop-ups. Yeah. So yeah. instead of shipping, yeah. you wait till you pile up some uh, a collection of items. Yeah. And then you throw like a pop-up and and it's, talk about like how, how do you throw events? Yeah. So that first one, it was like June last year. So pretty recent. Um, I think it's a, a lady that I, she used to be my tutor actually. And she runs this like amazing tutoring business here in Toronto on Young Street. And 
I, I can't remember how it all started, but I started thrifted this. It had like under 5,000 followers at the time. So it wasn't anything like crazy. And at the time it was me just telling people through my videos, like, Hey, like go follow this tag your outfit. If you know, whatever, if you're into thrifting, but, um, people started asking like, oh, are you selling this? Are you selling that? Whatever. And at the time, again, I wasn't really doing Depop. So she, I think was the one that my friend and I wanted to do like some sort of pop-up because we're like, this just seems like a more efficient way to do it. Plus we'll get to meet some subscribers through doing it as well. And I've just always wanted to kind of have a retail store, but nothing permanent. Cause that's a lot of work. And obviously in today's economy and everything, like it's not suggested or recommended. So we took advantage of the free space that we had and just kind of promoted it. I included some of those other girls that I mentioned from Toronto because we all kind of have a different style, but still heavily produced thrift content. And yeah, it was pretty successful, like did pretty well for the day. Wasn't marking things up and in, like insanely. And people seemed to really like it. We were there for less than 24 hours. Like we had to set it up. It was a study lounge to begin with. It's yeah. kind of like a newer concept. So it's for high school students. Um, it's like come, a work for Yeah, for students. high school students. So we had to move like all these tables, everything, put them in this tiny room in the back, set up all our racks and then take it all down like at the end of the day. So it was a lot of work, but it was so much fun. And after that one, we were like, okay, we should probably do this more often. Like that was great. Like nothing bad happened. And if anything, like people seem to want another one. So we did another one. I think we'd done three or four in Toronto and they've all been great. Um, we're actually doing one. We haven't planned like a summer one here yet, just because I get a little bored with doing things like the same way yeah. over and over. So I just kind of wanted to regroup and think of a different concept because along with doing YouTube videos and stuff, it's very, very time consuming. But um, we're doing one in like cottage country at the end of the summer, which will be fun and like kind of a different different setup and it's for a week too I've never done one that long but I'm excited for that and yeah they all just kind of happened like <laughs> there's not much there is a lot of planning but it's a lot of like last minute planning that goes into it yeah and I'm just kind of rolling with everything I get so many questions like please do one in like Michigan even or New York or LA and obviously there's things I have to figure out first yeah you know legal things and actual business things that I should sort out first <laughs> before I can do anything because if it was that easy to just like pop up I would but yeah I would love to do it all over because again there's like this whole thrifting community on YouTube too mm -hmm. that has grown even bigger and they're all over mostly like the states and Canada I think it's primarily here in Toronto but I know there's some people in Montreal and Vancouver so I would love to do that but just right now it's like too it's too hectic. <laughs> I wish it wasn't like that, but it just Yeah, it I know. Is. You got to get like government official regulations. Yeah, and city it's very things. stressful. Did anyone come in that wasn't like just popped in from the street? And, like, yeah, out yeah. What you had? So the one that we do on Young Street, we've done it twice now. We actually just did one in May. Again, like the one day thing. Same location as last year. And that was great. It was a nice day. It's like I don't have, you went. You've been yeah, on I've Young been Street. Young, yeah. So it's like on a nice day. It's great. There's tons of people out walking. And there's lots of retail stores. Um, but yeah, the other ones too. We had people just walking in and I promoted some things on Instagram just to try it out. Like very low budget advertisements, like $20, whatever. Yeah, in, the, in the area. Yeah, and that worked too. Um, so just experimenting with different things has definitely been helpful. And then I think most importantly, it's the reach of like all the vendors that we have. Because everyone is technically an influencer and they have that influence and that reach which is like essentially free marketing and advertising right so when you say vendors so you're actually getting these events sponsored by people like no no no, no. like or? um well kind mm, we i'm trying to think Are we you haven't had any like big sponsors yet we do usually try and make the shopping experience like better than any thrift store experience you would have like we have because you guys are experts <laughs> yeah food and drink sponsors and stuff like that but vendor wise we've only ever had um other youtubers like selling their stuff so i haven't introduced like anyone selling anything else because there's a lot of that kind of stuff already going around and i feel like it kind of takes away from the initial like the actual Organic purpose yeah movement of it yeah and the spaces that we've used so far haven't been like you know, huge halls or anything like that. So there's not really 
room for it at the moment but but yeah so it's always just us and we kind of do everything like thankfully I'm friends with these girls and they're all very helpful too so they don't want to I am very bad at delegating tasks and as I mentioned I kind of do this on my own right now and of course with like the help of Daniel and my sister and other family members and stuff like that but when it comes to like my friends that are involved being like what can I do to help like no we need to do something and I'm like I don't know just (laughs) I can't tell you what to do right now but I with the last one I did delegate a little bit better so I'm proud of myself for doing that but um sometimes they just know what needs to be done though too and they'll just they'll just take initiative and do it but yeah it's definitely it's a fun it's a fun environment because you get mostly like subscribers coming in to shop which is fun because it's like they're a meetup ones. almost yeah it's like a meetup it's very people always ask, I get the random question sometimes too people being like are you going to do a meetup and I'm like I do technically like a meetup like every season because we do these like pretty much every season but then again I think a lot of people don't realize that I'm thrifted this so because I haven't mentioned it on my channel in a while yeah. which I kind of like but it's good to separate your brand it is yeah I don't want to be like the face of that um I don't feel like I need to be so I don't I don't want to be right now but um for those those who know they know you know <laughs> but um but you brought up something that's that's interesting to me like uh like you said we can all be you're like a one-man band I am, I'm like a one-man band I have to do mm-hmm. the do the video i have to do this audio setup i have to learn how all this stuff works mm-hmm. i have to learn the softwares and exporting and working with brands and emails yeah it's kind of nice when like you're collaborating with other people because like i said i can like daniel can help me out like can you make sure the video is framed yeah. can you set the light up can can you test the audio like it's and you bring up a good point when you have these communities mm-hmm. like the audience is almost like a shared pool of people mm-hmm and rather than than compete with each other it's nice that you guys can all actually get together Mm -hmm. and do something that helps you all continue to grow like throw a pop-up where now you're not all doing 100 percent of the work you're each doing like 20 percent pulling your weight and but you can all enjoy the entire event yeah of course like i always want to i love working with other people um i like being my own boss I guess in a sense but I also like collaborating a lot and I think it's healthy and important so those events kind of keep me motivated and like they're exciting too it's just nice to do something new and fun for once and yeah work with other people and get to be surrounded by so many other people too so are some of like the other channels that I should check out because like I said I I only know a few of the different guy channels yeah the guy channels what channels do you like in general or like, who are these people that you're working with? The people I'm working with. So let me just remember all of them so I don't forget any. Well, we have my two girls that I always go on. They're my great friends. And we go on actual like thrift trips together. So I've been going to Buffalo with them and stuff like that. So that's Rachel, my friend Rachel, Rachel Speed. She kind of does more. She'll include a thrifting video here and there, but it's more like fashion lifestyle focused. And then my friend Haley, Haley's Corner. Um she does mostly thrifting and we have a bunch of other girls too those are just the ones that we like go on trips and stuff together with i'm sure once you find like a few you can it's like a rabbit hole into the whole community yeah it's definitely it's so nice like we love just chatting about things and you know just getting each other's advice and being able to like do fun things that are also work too is really nice and it's a little bit of a different concept and I'm still getting used to it because it's like... Oh, you okay, guys when... weren't friends before? No, we weren't friends before. Oh, cool. I met them through like DMing. I actually... So Rachel, I DM'd because I was doing some other type of pop-up. It was just like a closet sale type of thing. Um, so I DM'd her and like saw she was doing a lot of fashion content and was interested in seeing if she would want to be a part of it and then ever since then we've been really good friends that was like two years ago now and then Haley I was actually thrifting with Rachel at one of the value villages here and Haley we'd never met her before but she was making YouTube videos and she came up to both of us and she was like oh I watched like I think she only watched Rachel at the time and that was like the start of our friendship almost in a way too so we actually met at a thrift store (laughs) which is funny and then yeah there's a bunch of other great girls too from Toronto that all kind of have I think we kind of clicked because we have similar style and like a similar like within the thrifting niche there's like even more 
niches. Like there's some girls that do mostly home decor and stuff like that too. Yeah. But for us, it's mostly like trendy things, like finding it, using it as a substitute for shopping, like fast fashion, I think mostly yeah. is what, how I look at it. Like I always want to be staying relevant. Something that I was afraid of when I started thrifting was like, ooh, I don't want to have this like thrifty style. You know what I mean? Like there's always those people that have like that distinct thrift yeah. store style. And I feel like. I know what you mean. Like baggy purple and green. Yeah. Like, just Nike, like 90s jacket. Or 90s. That, that or even for <laughs> girls, like it was very like dress floral, like loose fitting dresses and like combat boots and like a jean jacket or something like that. Is what know. you're wearing now thrifted? It's yes. The top <laughs> is thrifted. I'm kind of talking about what i don't want to be right now but it's fine it's no, summer it's, okay. it's the summer. top is thrifted so top like is thrifted the and and i not. would never guess it, it doesn't it's not like stereotypical like yeah, oh this girl like a, is like a thrift store girl exactly i don't want to look like i just walked out of a thrift store so yeah. that's kind of my goal with it because i know a lot of people look at it in different ways and why they do it but for me it's mostly because when i started my youtube channel in general it was like oh i want to talk about things that are affordable because i was you know in university working like multiple jobs and I still wanted to follow trends and like buy nice things but didn't have the money to like go out to all the most expensive stores that everyone seemed to be talking about on the internet so I started by talking about a lot of like you know forever 21 and H&M and stuff like that a lot of fast fashion because of course that's like the most affordable but then I quickly realized like thrifting was a great substitute for those types of stores yeah. and like zara and stuff like that too and you can I think find a lot of people might not know when you say fast fashion mm, yeah like, so a lot of people have a problem with fast fashion as they call it like h&m stuff that mm -hmm. turns around seasonal clothes or whatever like mm -hmm. really quickly but at the same time is like producing a lot of waste or something yeah, lots of waste right? so, so it's thrifting is sustainable because it's secondhand you're re giving something a new life is that mm -hmm. how you look at it yeah mostly that's how i look at it um there's like some great sustainable there's more and more sustainable retailers too that are evolving and those are great but they're really expensive for the most part um and it's not really an option for everyone that wants to mm -hmm. you know be eco-friendly and make more conscious shopping decisions so i think thrifting is a great start into that world and i mean hey i still i still go to stores in the mall and stuff like that because from for someone who was completely like entirely shopping at those cheap stores and then switching over to thrifting like entirely i think some people some of my audience members expected that like oh you're talking about thrifting like you must be sustainable you must be eco-friendly like 100 percent, but you know, that's not, that's a very hard transition to do. And it's like a whole yeah. lifestyle essentially. And I didn't yeah. grow up like that. I didn't, I only started doing this like not that long ago, like intensely. So for me, it's, I have a very relaxed approach about it. And I feel like in a way, I hope that will translate to other people. Cause when someone is making you like feel bad, like feel really bad about what you're doing, then it kind of turns you off of doing it or makes you scared or like yeah what if i do this like maybe it's not good enough or i just don't want to judging any, you yeah, yeah i don't want anyone to ever feel like that so i tend not to speak much to the sustainability yeah. aspect because i want everyone to think that they can they can do it and it's all little steps right yeah. like you're just being authentic like you're not yeah. lying and acting like i'm 100 percent no vegan. i'm not a monster no but yeah, like, I'm not vegan. like you said like a little bit better is better than not better at exactly all. so i feel like through promoting this like oh hey look i went to the thrift store i got this t-shirt that looks like it's from urban outfitters whatever yeah, yeah. maybe i'll inspire five or ten people from that video hopefully more than that but maybe like five or ten people to go out and buy a shirt from the thrift store instead of one from another store at the mall yeah it might happen so i think that's a good way to look at it and that i don't I don't beat myself up about that because there's a lot of great channels on YouTube that talk about sustainability specifically and those topics and fast fashion. And I don't think I have the knowledge either. Like I've learned a lot over the last year or so because I have a friend that runs a sustainable business and it's opened up a lot of like we have a lot of discussions about that kind of stuff now. And I've learned mostly from her and just through reading things now that I'm like into it. So I'll take a little bit more interest. But yeah, I don't feel like I have that much knowledge where I can deliver those types of videos so and again it kind of opens up a door to be like criticized if you're not doing it like 100% so yeah I'd rather not do that <laughs> I mean 
yeah authenticity is key Mm -hmm. and it's like sometimes who am i to preach something like i don't know what's best for the world i don't know what diet is best and whatever Mm -hmm. let's not get into that i don't i don't we don't want any i don't show that stuff either i just make tutorials (laughs) and people still find a way to get me they still do most people are nice i love you but as long as you're confident (laughs) in what you're doing right like you know enough and yeah you're good at it and that's you're passionate about it yeah and i'm still learning to it as mm-hmm. as you are we're, yeah we're not like expert teachers just because we're on youtube yeah posting videos we're just like sharing and learning through that as well yeah and i think a lot of you people know that with youtubers yeah. right like unless it's i don't know some intense like cooking channel or something like that where yeah. you expect them to never mess up but gordon ramsay yeah does he have a YouTube channel? <laughs> yeah he has like one of really? the biggest he posts wow. all his best clips shout out gordon ramsay i didn't even know but um i was gonna ask about like fear Mm -hmm. How do you get over being scared of filming in public? Because I've tried vlogs. My gosh, it's awkward and hard. It is. How do you record inside the thrift stores and like, hey, guys, let's do this. But meanwhile, some ladies like looking at you like the youth these days is degenerated. Yeah. (laughs) It's always the old people that have the funniest reactions. But um, I'm very like aware of my surroundings anywhere I go. That's just something that I always do. I'm always like making sure like checking who's around and everything like that and am I in a safe location am I not because I mean a lot of thrift stores aren't in the greatest of areas um especially I found that when we went to Buffalo most recently we went to this first one and luckily we like entered through a side door where it looked nice and then we got inside then when we were leaving I was like yeah definitely should not have our cameras out like just because you know it's like I go with a group of three other girls or whatever and we're all dressed nicely we all like yeah. have our makeup on and we're like hey da, 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 da. don't want to attract attention to ourselves all the time but yeah. yeah i most of the thrift stores that i feel most comfortable vlogging at like i go to frequently some of them even know myself and my friends and like what we do so that makes it a little bit easier i still though like i always try and film when no one's really around because i don't want to upset anyone yeah. and bother anyone Uh, bother anyone like i don't care if someone's three rows two rows over and they're like hearing me do it but i don't want people like in the background that don't want to be there and that kind of situation so i'm just very careful i guess which makes it a little bit harder because you do have to like be thinking and like always watching and you might need to retake a shot like 20 times just because you know someone might walk by or whatever it might be so yeah i just i kind of have learned to just film when nobody's there really but they're yeah. they might be near and then i just do a lot of like b-roll stuff too and yeah i think that's a good way to look at it yeah like, just just don't be the like dude who's just like recording everyone people do that and i mean those people probably get more successful because they just have no shame exactly and honestly, there's probably a benefit to being a little bit more shameless yeah but at the same time i just personally i just have too much shame to do anything it's like very that. hard like <laughs> even like vlogging in the streets here it's I don't know. I think that's also probably what's held me back from vlogging just because it is a little weird. I, it really depends on like the day too and where I am and how I feel. And yeah. if I'm with other people, like if I'm with other Absolutely. people, it's a lot easier yeah. to converse with someone and have your camera out versus just doing, you it know, alone. projecting your voice, talking to a camera and holding it up high too. like, I'll try and prop it up, prop it up somewhere and like look at it and make sure no one's really around me or again like talking like looking at an item focusing on something with the camera and then like talking behind it almost like a voiceover but yeah when I'm alone I'm like I do this voice which I'm like almost doing right now when I'm trying not to yell (laughs) and then people attack me in the comments and they're like why do you have that like smoker's voice like why are you talking like that or the Kardashian voice they call it and I'm like I'm not trying to sound like that I just don't want to yell at the thrift store like if I'm talking at this level yeah then people are gonna hear me and it just I don't want to run the thrift store show like that's not my goal I don't like attracting attention to myself but again another thing too is thrift stores are generally like pretty quiet and empty the times that I go so that's another good thing I don't go on weekends because weekends are like really busy and I don't really go in the evenings either when they would be busy. So I get kind of lucky that I have the flexibility to go and do it when I want because it's not like there's people in every aisle. As I was saying before, it's pretty calm and I can usually find the space that I need to find, which is which is nice. But yeah. yeah. So like wrapping up on like the YouTube advice, closing mm-hmm. that section out, I guess. So you have grown your channel to over 100,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And um and 
I'm still waiting for my plaque up there. Oh yeah, I Actually, was telling Daniel you guys got the new plaques. Oh yeah, I no, the, I was kind of, one. I was kind of sad about that. But those are nice, actually. Are they? You ours are, they ours are, are gonna look outdated. No, but they'll be vintage and <laughs> yes. cool. Oh. Maybe it's worth. I know people sell their plaques on eBay. Really? Wow. Sometimes Maybe I, I don't thrift, know. You can buy fake. I can ones. thrift a YouTube plaque. That would, that's gonna happen in like 50 years. Like that's when yeah. You get their Ooh, that will be my like, thrift, like vlog YouTube plaques and stuff. of 20. It's gonna be virtual reality thrifting for 2050. But you you've grown your channel, you've grown your Instagrams, you've mm -hmm. got the side brand going, you're dabbling and throwing events, and mm -hmm. you're building up this network of different people doing similar stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know you you probably work with brands and stuff. Yes. Um, are you doing this full time now? Are you like able to n not do retail anymore? And do you plan on growing this into something? like that like how are you monetizing for anyone who's wondering yeah so I am doing it full-time luckily as I kind of mentioned about like my background I went to university here in Toronto so I lived at home and I saved a lot of money because I was working like yeah. multiple jobs I was always the type of person like I started working as soon as I could when I was younger and was whether that was like through babysitting at first and then like when you're 16 I think you're legally allowed to have your first job here so I started doing many things retail teaching tennis like keeping myself super busy and I saved money which was great and through going to school here I saved money too and I was able to like invest and take the time to work on things that I was passionate about so when I finished university and I studied business and I studied studied retail specifically I just didn't really want to jump into anything like I had been to networking events and stuff like that and I just didn't know what it was exactly that I wanted to do and I really wanted to be creative and I just didn't like experience is always a good thing but I just really didn't want to do it at the time so my parents were very patient with me and they let me kind of work like a side job and work on my YouTube and luckily luckily I won some like contest with a big magazine here fashion magazine based out of Toronto and that was kind of like a steady thing and it was good experience and I was producing videos for them and kind of doing some other freelance videos too like my my video skills are nowhere near like yours or Daniel's but some people trusted me with it so that was that was a nice feeling and I actually like did some videos for clients I guess you could say so I was just doing like random things for about a year maybe a year and a half and then I'd say like from last year I've been able to make it a sustainable business yeah. sustainable in the sense of not what we were talking about livable. before <laughs> yeah a livable one and it does take a lot of work and even right now this is good because you're asking you're actually asking a lot of questions Making that you think about it no, no no I was um I felt like really behind this year and I made a post on my like a community post on my channel recently like literally yesterday just saying um you know, leave me some questions or thoughts you have. And like, I want to talk, I just want to talk about things because I find yeah. a lot, I am me, like I'm my brand on my channel, but when I'm doing like constant thrifting videos or sponsored videos, sometimes I don't get to just talk about how I'm feeling about things or what I want to actually be doing. Oh, hello. <laughs> Is this my chance? No, Is he's it? gone. Oh, he loves to sit on the I will get sitting by the fan. But um, yeah, so you're actually asking a lot of questions that people wanted to know more about me about like yeah is this my job type of thing and how did I make it my job so it's good it's getting me prepared because I'm still going to film that video but they can come and watch this too if yeah. <laughs> they want to hear more in-depth take on it but yeah it was definitely like at the beginning I wasn't making a lot of money doing it I was lucky because I said I saved and I've always been pretty smart with my money in terms of that so I just I never like to risk things I guess um but now don't let him like it. It's just going to sniff. <laughs> but <laughs> now, okay. but now, um, it's mostly, I guess, income for me is mostly through sponsorships. Yeah. Um, people were asking specifically if thrifting and reselling was like a sustainable business for me. And I guess some people think that the pop-ups like do tremendously yeah, like well, selling, but buying and selling. Yeah. But to be honest, I don't buy enough to like make enough to live off of but it's also a very tricky question like I'm sure you've seen especially with that guy that you were talking about too it it's like so much work yeah. to do that as a job um and make that your full-time job yeah like an eBay type of business yeah, yeah. um ew it's <laughs> like give me the mic I'm ready I'll but yeah I, I agree with what you're like 
sometimes it's hard for when we're in uh when we're just in our usual flow of videos, like I can't get out a lot of aspects of my thoughts and personality yeah. via a tutorial, mm-hmm. but it's nice to have this podcast and live streams yeah. and different things because it allows you to speak on like subjects that you never would like. So like being in a YouTuber relationship and yeah. drifting and things like that, which maybe not everyone subscribed for, but a lot of people, some people might enjoy it as well. Exactly. Cause they want to know a little bit more it's about diversification. You. And that's the it thing is. with this YouTube career or whatever mm-hmm. i'd hate for us to look like some like raving millennial like <laughs> like egomaniacs that think that we're gonna be doing i don't know i just <laughs> don't want us to look like youtube is such hard work yeah, and, yeah yeah but like the thing that i've thought about too like yeah i have thought about okay like what if youtube just blows up tomorrow mm-hmm. well the thing is we still have developed in my opinion like me you dan we have developed some very valuable skills in this modern age Mm -hmm. like you've developed the skills of uh, brand community management Mm -hmm. and branding and curation and like editing in the sense that like you can go into a thrift store and pick out what's valuable like this vintage madonna tea is valuable so like i mean when you work at a museum they call that curation or Mm -hmm. art gallery and those people probably get paid you know regular so salaries we could do that. well yeah <laughs> i'm saying if youtube blows yeah. up like we're we're filling in your art gallery jobs we're, we're filling taking in them. we're taking your <laughs> all kinds of jobs we'll be in yeah but like i don't ever worry too much about yeah, that which is good skills but yeah i think we're all it's a little bit scary and your own business you're building your own business too. yeah i think it's more like if your channel doesn't take yeah. off or whatever because uh, for a while there I kept telling myself like that year when I graduated, I didn't have, I had under probably 50,000 subscribers, which at that stage, it's very hard hard, to have a sustainable business unless like, unless you have your own products and you're really a solid business. Yeah. Unless your engagement is insane or like, say you have 200,000 on Instagram and like, that's your secondary platform, then you could do it. But yeah, for me, I was like, okay, I'm going to give myself a year because you know, if not, I'm going to need to get another job. Like I'm not going to just not work. I have skills and i've got to put them to use and i want to you know be independent financially and such so i don't even remember what i was just talking about (laughs) yeah you're right i'm just giving you a doomsday scenario yeah 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 ultimately oh right i I think a lot of people might have that like fear but i think yeah what you said is right be realistic Mm -hmm. like i did the same thing i said if i don't see enough traction to where this can be something like like a business at least as much as my retail job was Mm -hmm. by the time that i graduate yeah then i will go get a job with my degree yeah but somehow magically when i set that deadline for myself it it started working by the time i graduate so which is good yeah it's just persistence and as i mentioned before it's like i was uploading at least once every week and i was making efforts to like really you know reach out to other people collaborate and do all that kind of stuff because but you have to do that yeah you i mean realistically i could have worked there. another job too but with the way i am and how particular i am and how many hours go into it i just really didn't want to do that at the time and i always wanted to do like multiple things like that's why i guess i have a couple of things going right now because as i mentioned i get bored and i just want to switch it up but yeah it's it's going well now which is good and i just got to focus on you know staying loyal to my audience and not taking on too many brand deals because i know that's a thing on youtube when people get even though i always work with brands that i yeah that's something else i kind of wanted to touch on too in my personal thing so i might as well just throw it in here this podcast (laughs) does not have a sponsor yet so everything we're saying is honest and authentic loyal but But one um, day i might find one hopefully you will you will we'll get you a sponsor but sponsored by justinodisha.com slash shop there we go and thrifted this there we go pop-ups we have a website thrifted.com but you cannot purchase anything but um yeah something that my take on sponsorships at least is the reason i was so passionate about like making it a job for me was because i took a lot of like marketing related courses and as i said retail courses and i always just thought it was so cool to be able to like i'd see these youtubers working with cool brands that i would want to work with and just how they were essentially like creating content for these amazing cool brands but like on their own terms with not that many guidelines was just like a huge goal of mine so I'd say like 90% of the sponsorships that 
I take on right now are brands that I've reached out to personally. And it's not like I'm not reaching out to 20 brands every week. It's it's very specific. Like there's ones that you use anyway, ones that I use anyways, or ones that I have like a great video idea for that. I'm just like, hey, this would complement this super well because I'm going to do it anyways. So that's something that I think maybe differs for myself from like a lot of other channels that are similar to mine because I'm so passionate about marketing and everything that goes behind it that I really care about like the brands I work with and I think it's really cool to be able to create content for them too whether it's on Instagram or YouTube and stuff like that so I love that aspect of it but I know with YouTube audiences they kind of sometimes get a little bit weird about it but well I think what you said is the best way to do it like you don't want to dilute your own brand Mm -hmm. I get a million emails every week about Mm -hmm. like new audio adapter Chinese plug-in product, please review and link Amazon. And yeah, I get those too, I, but for yeah, dresses. Like, <laughs> I, I I rarely, I have over 500 something videos, 600 maybe. And I rarely will do a sponsorship unless it's something that just makes sense. Like it's not something that's going to piss my audience off. It's something mm-hmm. I think is actually kind of cool. Uh, and I do it on my own terms. So I think yeah. as long as you aren't just like, doing every single sponsorship that comes in your email and you're yeah, only doing not. ones that you believe in it's more like optimization and monetization rather than selling out yeah but um true. yeah i think we've we've touched on a lot of good points i still want to leave some stuff for your own video so Thank people you. can check Thank it you. out <laughs> um yeah it was good timing actually yeah i'm telling you if you guys are not are into thrift if you aren't into thrifting check it out i know that you do like a lot of the fashion side of thrifting, yeah so more female if my audience is really male demographics you trust there's still like you can get into the whole flipping and reselling type or like like you said people buy like people buy furniture and do rest restoration type of videos which is so cool i wish there's all kind of cool stuff like with the secondhand market that i think can be a rabbit hole so i like all those kind of channels but um any final like final things any like really cool finds that you found recently or favorite things that i didn't (sighs) mention or closing thoughts that you want to tell people trying to think if there's anything in here that we've like if you ever found like a vintage like 1991 (laughs) the cameras those are all daniel's uh oh that jelly belly thrifted that's really cool you see a lot of those though honestly it's very hard a lot of people ask me like what's my favorite or like my best thrift find i'm just very bad at picking favorites in general but i just for me the thrill of it is like finding things that are old and they're so cheap now but they like give you the look like they resemble something that's new right now and Mm -hmm. that just is what makes me the most excited i think and then of course finding that rare designer piece too is fun but it's it's hard so i don't like set myself up like i don't set the the bar that high every time i go and i'm not like today i'm gonna find gucci and i'm gonna find ysl like because that's bad if you're doing it for those reasons it's gonna be very hard but you're much more likely to find like a vintage sports tee or something. yeah those yeah. are super cool though too because yeah like i like the kind of t-shirt that you're Thank wearing you. like well, you you will see that on uh at urban outfitters or, exactly. or like converse will sell brand new pre-distressed shoes yeah i have a pair of those so <laughs> i love them i love them shoes i am shoes kind are of different weird shoes are different i'm yeah. just getting into it but still sneakers like I, it's a little different t-shirts yeah. are cotton and you can just wash them yeah and it's like and like thing. wash them a lot of times yeah. too if you want <laughs> but yeah so that i think we talked a lot of, a lot of good stuff if anyone mm-hmm. wants more like thrifting info or just to check up on what you're doing or thrifted check on this, on the event instagram yeah That's thrifted everything. this instagram and i'll link your youtube channel Thank and you. some of your vlogs and stuff yes. uh, if you're from toronto maybe they can check out the next yeah, pop up or something of course but um yeah thank you so much for doing a pot doing this podcast with me thank you for having me yeah if you guys enjoyed the episode leave a like on it leave a rating on it if you're listening on itunes this is available on itunes spotify youtube so until next time uh, i'll see you guys in the next episode thank you so much for listening